You know, I, we get asked this question quite often, and for me, I can't, you know, I was one of those precocious kids that was reading, like, adult books when I was a little bit, <laughs> so I kind of skipped the fairy tale thing. And although my kids, I have, uh, certainly they see, now, it, they see some of the show. My older girl is six, so she's been able to watch a little bit of it. Um, and I always try to talk to her, like, to sort of balance out what the, the sort of modern notion of what girls are in fairy tales, which is something I think this show has dealt with in a really interesting way. But the one I always pick is Belle, because she's bilingual and she's a reader. <laughs> so that's what I always go with. I like my voice. Uh, uh, yeah, we get asked this a lot. I, I always loved Jack and Beanstalk, um, which we've done. Um, and, uh, and I also loved, uh, uh, you know, Little Red Riding Hood, which of course we did. Um, and then I just, as you were saying this, I, I just flat, I, I had never thought of this because I, I was asked this question this morning. Um, uh, anyway, we, I had some uh, interviews uh, this morning and, and I, uh, but it just, I just flashed on um, Samson and Delilah, which is not really a, uh, you know, a fairy tale, it's more a Bible, but I, it also had sort of fairy tale elements to it, so I, I thought of that. But th that's the amazing thing about what they've done, obviously, is that they, they've sort of got this canvas, which is so <coughs> wide, that they can go anywhere. I mean, it's not the disease of the week, or the, you know, the, the perp of the week, or the dead body of the week. I mean, like, most of those are generated out of... Sometimes it is the dead body of the week. <laughs> Right. Um, or the curse of the week, but but, but, but um, uh, in this case, you know, they I mean, they've got Frankenstein, and they've got they've gone they've gone into literary characters as well, and, and uh, that's what's exciting about this show and the part of it is it it seems like it's limitless in terms of stories. Uh, you, you know, growing up, growing up, I think uh, you know I was more interested in like Jason and the Argonauts and those types of uh, things, and not really in fairy tales per se. Although you know. Uh, Growing up, sort of in an Italian household, and sort of was a uh, um, you know a lower blue collar sort of household. You were sort of living oddly the Pinocchio Geppetto story. You were you know I mean you know Pinocchio is off doing whatever he wants to do, and Geppetto is trying to remind him to go to school, so he doesn't get kidnapped and doesn't end up on an island and doesn't end up a beast of burden. Essentially. You know that's so it's and uh, you know the Pinocchio uh, story is interesting too in that it's a. It's not a very, it's not old old like some of them. It's not grim. It's not. It's uh, it's a 19th century uh, fairy tale written by a guy named Colati, and uh, so it, it was fascinating. They, they have these uh, you know sort of Pinocchio societies in, <laughs> in Italy too. Uh, you know, so they take it quite quite seriously. And uh, but I think that oddly is sort of an immigrant story, the Pinocchio story in a kind of way. Uh, and, and so I related to that. And actually, the episode when Sending Pinocchio through, it, it struck me as an, an immigrant thing. In, in now, it's nothing. Now we got phone cards. We jump on a plane, six hundred dollars to get to Europe. You know, from the East Coast. If, you know, when you get a deal. You know, and I always, you know, think back. I remember, when, you know, when you know it was outrageously expensive to go. And you, you know, when an immigrant came to the country, guess what? They probably weren't going back. You know what I mean? You weren't going to see this person. It wasn't like they were going over on a work permit for a year. Uh, and so that struck me, you know, really sort of in a, I didn't think it would. And then, you know, as an actor, particularly with fairy tales, you think, oh, I know it all. But then as an actor, you have to go back through and say, okay, really, what is going on? Because generally, the brilliance of this writing is that they take the fairy tale and they twist it. They never actually deal with the fairy tale. They deal with the prequel or the sequel to the fairy tale or the implications of the fairy tale. And you have to remind yourself about that as an actor so you can go in and give it a little, a little juice or a little something uh, different. Thank you said that about it being the ultimate immigrant story because it really is. I mean, they didn't change countries, they changed realms. Yeah. That's like as far as you can go, right, I think. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm Hope from Move Love Trains Podcast. Uh, thank you for your work with me also. Um, my question is for all three of you. Uh, both, all these characters have their <coughs> lives in their heads, and they're each kind of different. How do you differentiate between your enchanted, uh, enchanted forest sides and your story book sides? And what are the differences between those two characters? To you. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, uh, let's see. Uh, sorry, I, I, I was suddenly, I was thinking about it. And I, I, let me see if I can get my, the words around it. Uh, you know, look, I think that they were very clever to take uh, someone who's synonymous with conscience and, and made him a therapist. I, I thought that was very clever. Um, and um, I also was really struck by, and I've said this before, but I was really struck by the fact is that if you, you know, they, they, um, they gave him a tough road. He, he got there the hard way, meaning that it wasn't that he just sort of is being, do the right thing because he learned it or because he knew it or because he got the book. He'd obviously done the wrong thing for so long that he then really made his life about the purpose of doing right. And there's something very moving about that. It made me, really made me weep when I read it. I just thought it was a, you know, you know Joseph Campbell, if you know Joseph Campbell talks about myths, he talks about the hero's journey. So his hero's journey was really <laughs> uh, And um, so um, uh, in terms of the two realities, uh, you know, obviously, when I do fairy tale land, um, I'm about this big, and it's my voice. Um, uh, you know, a, as a therapist, uh, uh, Dr. Hopper seems to be sort of one of the few sane ones there, um, um, at least at this point. Um, and um, and and uh, he does seem to be there to try and really help help the others and help them on their journeys and and really be present for them and, and uh, support that, particularly obviously always concerned with Henry. Um, as a cricket, it, it, it seems... Um, there's a line you don't say I disagree. Um, right. as, a, as a cricket, uh, he seems to have a sort of a, a passionate and fiery sense of right and wrong. And, and um, um, I don't know that there's, that they haven't really, uh, I mean, the cricket part of him has been kind of been in and out as, as flashes. We haven't really, um, explored that yet, um, uh, but uh, you know, in, in terms of those, it, it's it's certainly fascinating. I think for all of us to play two roles, um, and I think it's really fun. You feel like there are other parts of you that get expressed. I also, I mean, they hired me, uh, and uh, many of us do other things other than, of course, this show. But I also have a voiceover career, so uh, it was interesting that they hired me to do this without knowing that I also done that. So, so, so there's some skills that you have in those arenas that I got to, you know, you bring to that, and that's fun. Um, so because when you're doing a voiceover, invariably you have to get all of it through your voice without the the use of your body or your eyes, or your hand movements, all the things that I'm doing now, right? Um, and um, you are, um, uh, you know, in this case, they have a sort of a, the CGI, which is the computer graphic um, of the cricket, and I'm voicing that. So anyway, it's an interesting, it's, a, it's, just, it's just different, but it's it's fun. I'm sorry, I may have talked too long. Go ahead, what's your question? <laughs> you know, really, it's, for me, it's, uh, hey, what's going on out there? You know, for me, it's very obvious because uh, when I'm in story work, I'm a, a human and I'm full sized, mm -hmm. and when I'm in fairy tale land, I'm four feet in the air by myself, hanging from wires. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there's a differentiation right off the bat with that. I think those two characters. I kept, you know, I really wanted to make them different. I don't really know how different they are. I think there's a reason why they made them the nuns. I think it tells you that the, I don't know, well, I know you, she's like, no, you're insidious, I hate you. No, no, no. <laughs> 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 it's like a nun, like mafia yeah, boss. Yeah, like, like old school pope. That's yeah. what I always think. So like, they're like, I will do whatever I have to. It's like the Borgias, you know? Yeah. I do, I think that she'll, yes, sometimes does she cross the line to do what's right for the realm, I think, yes. Or the key, you know, um, the, so that that's the difference in that. But I think the notion that they made them the nuns is the, that that they're there to serve, and I think that that's always what's on the page. I think um, yeah, we wait and see whether it is. I know. I see all the little blue skeptics out there. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know. You're awesome. Oh, there we go. Uh, well, you know, I can say that. Uh, you know, going from uh, Geppetto to Marco, I spent 45 minutes in the trailer looking for my wings. <laughs> these, these two guys had wings, and I didn't get any wings. Uh, yeah, I actually agree with uh, with King of that. It's sort of, uh, it's a little, some of the characters are very, very wide apart, and others are sort of closer. Uh, and so it's a little bit 
more of like a mental state, you know. Uh